and, and the chord shapes that we choose for the song. So it helped us get close to the spirit of the song uh, that we were working on. And this is uh, another example of the alarm acoustic guitar with pickups. Again, this is from 1982, 83. And uh, that was actually built by a guy called uh, Moon Guitar up in Glasgow. And uh, Dave Sharp had, had that commission, but when he got it, he didn't like it. Uh, so he's got an active PA P, um, pickup system here. So he gave it to me very kindly, up in my thought. And here it is. And then uh, this is uh, from 1986, it goes with the, with the red shirt here, you can see the photo. And that's uh, a guitar from Guild, and they were very interested at the time when we were playing acoustic guitars with pickups. It was very unheard of for people to play acoustic guitars live on stage unless you were yes and you had those brown back guitar prime guitars. And, uh, that a lot of the guitar companies were coming to check out how we were amplifying acoustic guitars and, uh, and it became a little bit of a, this was a prototype guitar and I used it at the UCLA gig and the whole tour and it, it's all really thin but it, it sounds like an acoustic guitar but it's almost a bit of a guitar band really I think. I think I should start using it again. I'll start using it again. Yeah. But uh, I used to use really heavy guitar picks, and you can see where it's been gouged away. So it was like taking a hammer to it when I played the guitar, I think. And uh, I didn't have the most fits. I was too caught up in the singing to worry about the guitar so much then. I used to beat hell out of the guitars, as you can, you can see. And uh, this is um, another one from Guild, as things moved on into 1990. And this guitar actually played right here at Pontins in in 1990 when, uh, when we came here with the alarm to play a benefit show after the town in floods which was, uh, I was there with Steve Allen who was playing keyboards for us at the time and we were sat in a cafe in Norway and we were watching the TV and we could see a local North Wales real bus floating down a high street on the TV and it was all in Norwegian and we couldn't understand it but we knew something was going on in our hometown so we we called home and a friend of ours, Bob Hewitt, who would be here tonight as well, answered the call and helped us put on the benefit show to help the families who were bereft of their homes in the aftermath of the, of the floods. And then as, as things moved on, we, uh, this here is a, a kind of, a, I bought this on the, uh, in Los Angeles in, uh, in 1991 on the Alarms Raw Tour. And uh, I just decided I wanted to get into playing some electric guitar and writing songs in a different, with something heavy, sat around. And uh, this is the guitar that uh, I used in Colour Sound with Billy Duffy and, and wrote a lot of the songs with Billy for Colour Sound using that guitar. And uh, we used to rehearse in this uh, really funky place up in North Wales behind Abergelly in Moilborough. And it was a, in a shack on the side of a hillside run by our friend Chris the Hippie. And uh, he was a real free man of the land. And uh, he lived kind of outside society, but he had a real a great shed that we could rehearse. It was full of all funky carpets and had an incredible atmosphere. And uh, he had a porch, a wooden porch, and we and he'd play jazz in the mornings. We'd get there and he'd be playing jazz. And me, Billy, Craig, Johnny Dogley at the time from the Saw Doctors would turn up and, and create the music that you know as the Colour Sound record. And um, we were playing and the song we were working on at the time was Alive. And um, the solo was going on for quite a while with Billy, as he likes his solos. And um, I thought, I was thinking of, he played something that reminded me of the cult. And I was, when I think of the cult, I was thinking of Ian Astley playing the tambourine. So I picked up the tambourine and because I needed to still be playing guitar, I started to hit the guitar with the tambourine and, uh, and that became part of the Colour Sound signature uh, imagery and if you come and look at this guitar closely you'll see all the smashes in it from when I was battering the hell out of it with the tambourine and, uh, and using the tambourine as like a pick, uh, guitar pick on it which uh, Billy thought was quite interesting and he quite admired that I would beat a Les Paul up that cost a lot of money with a tambourine. And, uh, I'll tell you about that one in a minute. Just only got one string on it. 
And uh, this, this guitar here is, a, is a, a Sparrow. It's a big daddy uh, Gretsch guitar. And uh, again, it, it harks back to some of the guitars we used to use in the early days of the alarm. We used to use uh, uh, Gill Starfires and things like that. And um, when I got asked to go and sing uh, for Big Country, I thought it was important to take into that role. I thought, you know, Stuart was so iconic and, and he was a guitar playing singer, uh, guitar playing lead singer and front man. And I thought if I was going to take on that role, that uh, the singer of Big Country should play a guitar. And I didn't want to play one of the guitars I'm associated with, the, the, the Black J200 or the acoustic. So I went for a compromise. I went for a semi-acoustic guitar. And I chose this guitar, um, I've heard a lot about them, they're very similar to the Gretsch, to the White Gretsch, like the White Falcon that Billy Duffy plays. And uh, this guitar was, was made in Canada um, by a guy called Billy Bones, and he, he's a, a rockabilly fanatic. And uh, they used, they were, they, they loved Gretsch rockabilly guitars, but they, um, they wanted to play something that was uh, had a little bit more finesse and personalised without going to the whole expense of buying a Gretsch or uh, certainly vintage Gretsch anyway, and uh, something that had a lot of playability. And uh, I'd been writing to them for ages to try and buy a guitar, but no, no replies. And then I realized that uh, through doing a bit of research, trying to get one of these guitars, that their, their whole factory had burned down in Canada. And uh, I think the whole Sparrow guitar empire had gone out of business. And it was, it was a really great, uh, story to the guitar, so I had to hunt one down, and uh, I managed to get this one. This is the last one. It was left in a in a, in a distribution warehouse in in Britain and hadn't been delivered anywhere. And in the fallout from the fire and closure of the guitar uh, manufacturer Billy Bones, uh, this was the last one left in Britain and got shipped out to me, and I was able to use it in uh, on the big country tour. And then this uh, one here is a. Uh, the one string bass, which was uh, again used in the vinyl film soundtrack, and um, it was something that I inherited. I went to buy a, uh, an amp, an AC30, uh, through the paper locally about 20 years ago, and, uh, and this got thrown in the deal. It's a Dallas bass guitar, and uh, it's probably from the 60s, and um, it just sat around in the chapel, and then. When uh, the, the chapel got used as one of the scenes for the vinyl film, uh, Keith Allen, if, if you all know who Keith Allen is, Lily, Lily Allen's dad, and the comedian and the actor who uh, plays the role of Minto in the film, he's the bass player in the film, and he just liked the look of this guitar, and it literally only had one string on it, so, uh, but he, uh, we got it all working for him again, and he uses this in the film, as you'll see later on this afternoon. So. Uh, that's another instrument that's quite legendary going to write its way into the uh, alarm history, so that's the Dallas bass. So, um, so with all these guitars, which uh, you're welcome to pick up later on if you like, um, it leads me to uh, one guitar, one guitar, the great song that we played last night, which was written by um, Willie Nile who's a great friend of ours, and um, where's James? Here he is. Come on, James, come and party. So we've got two guitars now. And is, has anyone brought guitars with them? Yeah? No guitarists. Yeah. yeah, okay, got a few guitars. Who, who plays guitar in the room? Right, okay, that's one of those. Well, right, well, we're going we're gonna to play, we're going to teach how to play one guitar. And uh, the great thing about one guitar is it's only got two chords. <laughs> well, at least my version has one of them. Now, James here has played a whole tour with Willie now, and they will tell you about Willie now. Yeah, I was about six months ago, I was lucky enough. Well, Willie emailed me and he said his normal American guitarist couldn't do his British chords. And he asked me. It starts off with these words uh, from Woody Guthrie. And they were written about 1946, 47. It says a lot about music and the power. 
A hater song makes you feel like you're no good. A hater song that makes you feel like you're nobody. And you're no good to nobody. I hate a song that makes you feel like you've been knocked down and there's no way back. Yes. I hate a song that makes you feel like you're born to lose. Makes you feel like you're bound to lose. A soldier marching in an army Got no gun to shoot All I got is one guitar And I got one guitar And it goes like this Marching drum, I hear the song of the sun. It could be your tune, my tune, I'm not the only one. Cause I'm a soldier marching in an army, got no gun to shoot, all I got is one guitar. I got one guitar, and it sounds like this.